suggesting that we can't even get a guarantee girl when we're going what's to going on hold on over 48 hours, over 48 hours what's going on how y'all doing good morning good morning good morning, good morning. Good morning. All right, so let me just break this down right quick. If you're coming for tea, mess, shade, or food, just which we normally do on this platform, this is not the time nor place for that. Please go to somebody else's live or somebody else's page for that. Today, we're going to talk about some real information that really is affecting a lot of us. Um, I made a post earlier today, which is in regards to the stimulus check, um, the stimulus as far as the stimulus check and as far as the... Uh, unemployment and stuff like that um, and I said some things in the post and in in the comment section I was seeing people posting a lot of stuff that was just actually factually inaccurate it wasn't true it was basically it made no sense they were saying the president gonna do this and the president can do that and the president can do this and the president can do this and Congress this and Congress was this and Congress Senate and it was a lot of misinformation it was like people are really unaware of like what's going on with happening so I went into nerve shaking for like two seconds I went into like real live nerve shaking like listen no let me tell y'all and break it down so at least even I'm, and I'm not saying something because you have an entitled to your opinion about anything but I want to make sure that your opinion is an informed opinion instead of just because I don't like sippers out there looking crazy especially on something that we could we talk about especially on something like this um, and so, so, and, and also too, from what we're hearing, especially in the news, it appears that like the president is for us now instead of against us. And that's just not true. So I'm going to love all over me, sister. I just said there is no tea. This is not tea. This is not none of that. This is not tea. This is not shade. This is not none of that. This is just real information. If you're looking for tea, shade and mess, I apologize. This ain't the time. We're not going to discuss it at all in this little segment okay come back all right so let me just break something down to y'all about democracy democracy is something that started like um it, it, it goes back as far as babylonia and 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 the 12 tribes of israel it go back that far um but democracy kind of like we know it began to take shape probably during the roman empire where they have things that we still use that they call like governors and senators those things began there and that was having the people have a say in how they're governed um before that a lot of times it was just governed by a king that was ordained by god and that was just um their thought process of whoever was the leader and that's what it was um and that's what people thought process was democracy came about when people say well listen you know instead of just having a king by birth and he just be somebody stupid let us have a part or say in how we're governed um, the Roman Empire, of course, broke up, and then you had the, the European empires that came about. They still had, like, the Roman Empire still had a supreme ruler or a, um, a um, Caesar or whatever, they, you know, what they call him. They, they're, you know, supreme overseer. And so uh, the European kingdoms took that and made some stuff. Um, and, and, and what happened was, in Europe, this was the problem. Um, there was no separation between church and state. Church and state was one. Basically, the Roman Empire had instituted the church, which was the Catholic Church. And Catholicism was a big thing back then. Um, and so there was no separation there. And the Pope had a lot of power in who getting married, how you getting married. And so kind of what started this ideology was this. Um, so the Catholic Church, so Henry VIII had a lot of wives. But from his first wife, the Pope wouldn't let him get a divorce because, you know, you had to go through the Pope for that. And so Henry VIII was like, you know what, <laughs> you know what, to hell with the Pope and I'm going to start my own church and I'm going to start what's called the Church of England. Now, this Church of England, of course, he said, well, I'm going to say, the, I'm gonna say the, whoever over it, I'm going to make them myself. And so that allowed him to get a divorce and try to have a male heir. For the throne this is where it's all started from so there were some people that were still aligned with the catholic church but everybody that wasn't aligned with the catholic church they called those people protestants because they protested the catholic church understand now when they discovered all this shit over here listen come on breaking it down for y'all when they discovered all this shit over here the um the the protestants wasn't really like the popular people over there in europe so a lot of times as punishment for being a protestant they'll send them over here so when we came over here when they, well not we but them the mayonnaise people when they came over here the protestants that's a lot of stuff that you see over here like catholicism or catholics is still way big over there like italians and stuff they're really really catholic and also old, those old french people they're really really catholic um but over here it's a lot of protestant religions which is basically your baptist your methodist and, and stuff like that all of those 
are considered was Protestant. So this is what started the whole big issue. Now, when we, they came over here, they saw all kind of stuff over here. Of course, as y'all know, the American Revolution happened because the, <clears throat> excuse me, because the, the uh, people over here were starting to be English people, but they didn't like the English having rule from way over there. Now, this is before the lands of faxes and all kind of stuff. So it'll take months for stuff to happen. And we was, and the Americans were being taxed because over the British, and the British was like, you know, I don't care what go on over there, do this, do that. And so this led to the American Revolution. And guess what they did? They protested and stuff like that. They protested. They tried to get some type of representation. They couldn't. And they started their own country. Now, when they started their own country, America, they decided on one thing because a lot of people over in America was Protestant, but there still was some Catholics. There was some Angli um, Anglians and Episcopalians and all this different stuff. They decided to have what is called, what instituted a separation of church and state. But this is why you get your freedom of religion from. Because they said, listen, this is a problem a lot of stuff started from. And so for, for, for we could just keep this thing going, we're going to let people worship however they want to worship. So they had the, so this was an instituted in the backbones of how this country was founded. Also, to keep some of those core values, we call them the Bill of Rights, it's the first 10 amendments to the Constitution, to keep some of those core values in, we wanted to institute a system of federal government that was not so pressing on what you do locally, which is why you have states and government, and you have states, counties, parishes, and different things like that. And so to do that, they had instituted a system of what's called checks and balances. Because what they didn't want to do is somebody to come in, get in power, declare themselves king, and say, this is what y'all have to do. That's what they did not want to do. Hold on one second. I'm sorry. I had to put my phone. <laughs> People were texting me. Okay. Um, so, so watch this. So when they did this system of checks and balances, they wanted to ensure that no single person have enough power to do whatever they wanted, but wanted to institute a, a place where people, in a sense, still possess the power by who they sent. So watch this. Your president cannot do whatever, whenever, and however he wants. Do not believe that. And if they did have that power, there would be no need for a Congress and a Supreme Court, which are the three branches of the federal government. The, the three branches of the federal government. Now, let's talk about the, the I'm going to talk about Congress real quick because that was, seems to be the thing that people were so misinformed of on what powers Congress has. Now, Congress is, is, is a bicameral branch of government, meaning there's two parts of Congress. The reason why they did it like that is to make it, to, 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 to keep it people-centric and still have a focus on the federal government. So your two parts of Congress are your senators and your House of Representatives. At press time, there is 100 senators. The reason why there's 100 senators is because it's 50 states and every state has two senators. That is what it is. If we get another state, there are going to be 102 congressmen. Every state has two senators. They are elected to serve a term of six years and every six years they re and, and they re and they re it's on a two-thirds basis. That's what senators do. The whole Senate is not elected every time there's every time there's election that's not what happens and so they're supposed to be the branch of government that has your state's interest more on a federal level your house of representatives is 435 members that is capped at 435 members how how you have a house of representatives is based basically on population that's why it's important for a census because what happens is while the senators are supposed to have the mindset of being representing the the the, the complete state's interest in the, in the federal government, the House of Representatives are supposed to be the people's representatives in the, to the federal government. Understand what I'm saying? The Senate is basically to look at the state collectively. The House of Representatives is supposed to, because you have your own House of Rep, you have your own House of Representative member, congressman, based on who you, where you at. So my congressman is Cedric Richmond. That's who represents me in Congress. If I call his office and say, listen, I'm one of your constituents, this is what I feel about that, he's supposed to listen. All your congressmen have web pages, emails, and phone that they answer to their constituents. Your state senators, your senators are also do this too for you, but they're aligned mostly with what the state says than what you say personally. Somebody could be in Louisiana and have the, a different representative than me because they're where they're located, because they're more tied to you, the people. And so what happens is these people come together as a body and they probably have the most power of any branch of federal government as a unit. Now, right now, we have, we have elected in the United States 68 
I don't want to lie to y'all. How many? How many senators are Republican? Because I want to say 68, 67 maybe. Oh, I'm so sorry. I apologize. I'm definitely wrong. How many Democrats versus Republicans are there? I am definitely wrong. I apologize, but that's why I like to get the real information. The Republicans have 53 senators. The Democrats have 45. And there are two independents, uh, Bernie Sanders is one of them, that generally vote with the Democrats. Okay, so the senators have the the Republicans have a small majority in the Senate, but with that, but the majority is the majority. It doesn't matter. So that's why they re, re run the Senate. Now the House of Representatives is a Democrat run. Let me make sure that I don't. I don't want to get wrong, be one hundred percent wrong. How many um, representatives are Democrat? We gonna get talk about real information. And so this is why it's important. You have to vote. Okay, so. How many is it? Not in Louisiana, all over. All right, so you have 435 voting members, six nine voting members, 218 for majority. So right now there's 232 Democratic. So they have a majority in the Senate. I say, excuse me, in the House of Representatives. So the Democrats have the majority in the House of Representatives. The Republicans have the majority in the Senate. And this is where a lot of your problems come from because usually they do not agree on how things should run. That's where a lot of stuff coming from. The, 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 without an act of Congress, there's a lot that can be done. The CARES Act wouldn't have been there. Um, let me tell you something. Congress can make a law. The president can say, I don't like the law, and veto the law. But Congress still can override his veto. The Congress, if they vote right, can impeach the president and get him up out of office. Congress has a lot more power than, than the president. But as a unit, but the reason why is that because they're more aligned with what the people are saying. That's why they're supposed to have this power. And so the problems we're having right now, the problems we have right now is the fact that one side of Congress is Republican, one side of Congress is Democrat, and they can't agree. So it's like two. If, if you think about them as a unit, it's like the the devil on the left shoulder and the angel on the right shoulder, and they can't figure out what to do. That's the problem. So a lot of times we have to call our Congress. Trump cannot do anything without Congress. Don't let him fool you. Don't let him. Think. He cannot postpone the election without Congress. He cannot declare war without Congress. He cannot give you money without Congress. He cannot. He cannot. He, Trump cannot extend nothing. That is not true. Get it out your mind. It has to do with Congress. And so why is it important for us to vote for Congress too? Because they really have the, the, the muscle. The president is really what's called the executive branch. And the word executive, if you think about it, is to execute. Meaning that he is not the, he's the, while the president does have power to introduce legislation to Congress, Congress has the power to vote for it and say we don't like it. So we don't fuck you. And it stands like that. Now, he is his, his job to execute the laws of the land, meaning the lands that Congress give, the laws that Congress give, this is what he's supposed to execute, meaning that Congress passed the CARES Act, which gave us money. It became the president's job to make sure we get the money that Congress has, 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 has said he can give us. That's what his job is. That's why you got it from the Department of Treasury, which is under the executive department, and why he was able to sign it, because it became his job. Once Congress passed it, and he signed it into legislation, that means everybody agreed, we got it, we're going to get some money, here it go. I'm going to on your, send y'all your chimney checks, I'm going to put the money on y'all, what you call them, and that does. So it doesn't come from Trump, and Trump can say what he wants, but it's really Congress that has to make the moves. And Congress is who we have to fuss at right now, because it's Congress not doing anything. Now... People were saying, well, Trump wants to give us the money. Trump wants to extend it. Of course, Trump wants to extend it now. You know why Trump wants to extend it now? Because of this. It's a, a company called the RAL, which is the, um, no, the LAR. Hold up. Land, Landlords Association. It's the Landlords Association. No, oh, it's just the LAR. I, I thought it was the LA. LA. Hold up. LA. Is uh, uh, so LAR, which is the Landlords Association, LAA, which is the Landlords Association of America, which is a company, which is not a company, which is a political action group. And what they do is they landlords generally join this group. And if you own property, you generally join the association, you pay your dues. And what they do is send people that are called lobbyists to Congress to lobby for the what you believe and what's affecting you. Now, the landlords told Trump this. Listen, if you take their money away, they're not going to be able to pay us their rent. 
And so we're going to have to evict them and we're going to lose money. So Trump was like, oh, wait, and, and don't forget, Trump is a realtor. That's how he got all his money in anything. He became a realtor. He was a landlord. So he definitely understands this group of people. And so if they're telling him, listen, well, you got to give these people, us, us black folks, because <laughs> we're the people that rent the most. <laughs> we do. We rent the most. Us as Spanish people, we rent the most. Generally speaking, in this country, there are some black land. There are black landlords. I'm not saying black people don't own stuff. I am saying, generally speaking, I can almost promise you that the percentage or is a disparity in the percentage of white people that own property and rent it out versus black people that own property and rent it out. I can almost promise you. I don't have to look it up. I'm not even looking up. Y'all can if you do. I'm sure it's if if there's ten percent. Of people that are black that own property and rent it out, it's a thousand percent for white people. I can almost promise you that. So they got together and told Trump, who their partner is, look, we need you to do something because we're going to lose money. So Trump don't care about you. He cares about his friends and himself that are landlords and who he understands not being able to pay their rent. So now all of a sudden, oh, y'all got to give the people some money. Don't get it twisted that he got something for you. That's him looking for his people. That's him looking for his people because they figured out he don't want to have his people having to evict everybody. The, the, they're happy when we got money to pay them rent. They don't care where it come from as long as we pay the mark rent. Trump don't give a damn about you. This comes down to him looking out for his realtor friends and saying, okay, oh, y'all having a problem? What's your problem? Well, if y'all take the money away from them, how they going to pay us rent? Oh, let me let me go get on Congress. Let me see Congress. Y'all need to do something. Y'all need to come out with a bill or something so that they, so my pop, my people them could still get their coin dollars. That's what that's about. He don't care about you. And he don't care about giving you nothing. If that wasn't the case, if that was the case, this was something that would have happened a long time ago. Or the CARES Act would have been something that was recurring. And not only that, I mean, you could just look at what he's done as far as the pandemic is concerned and his utter utter failures about this. Oh, it don't exist. It's a hoax. Yet, yet and still his friends are dying now Herman Cain been to his rally no mask, no nothing because what Herman Cain got COVID, Herman Cain died yesterday was, um, from COVID complications and Co Herman Cain was a Republican black man who all a lot of times said exactly what he thought Trump was, everything Trump was saying he was just echoing back saying it's a hoax, people fed up, they don't need no mask yada yada yada, yet and still he died yesterday from COVID complications our respects goes out to his family and and their loss because he was a he was still a man a black man but he was a black man that was errored in ways of thinking by listening to these white people and whatever they were telling him that's just not true um as far as so <laughs> so don't be misconstrued about what happens congress has the power and that's who we need to call on this because guess what a lot of people are saying oh they extended it no they don't there are two proposals two proposals one proposal comes from one proposal comes from the Democrats, which is the HEROES Act. Now, the HEROES Act is a $3 trillion act. It not only gives us another $1,200, it keeps the $600 going until um, the end of the year, till January 31st. Uh, and that's what the HEROES Act does. That's what the Democrats proposed. Um, the Republicans proposed the HEALS Act, which is H-E-A-L-S. I do not know what the acronym stands for, nor that I care. I'm just telling you what it, what it consists of. HEALS Act wants to give you $200 until September and then give you 70% of what your income would have been 70% of what the on top of your state benefits 70% of the income from the state benefits until from September to the end of the year and they do also in the thing um, they want to give you another $1,200 if you're under if you make under $40,000 if you're over $40,000 they want to give you $1,000 up until a cap of $90,000. That's what the Heels Act does. Understand that. That's what it is. So they want to give you another stimulus check. All right. So Trump saying, let's do something. Let's do a thing. But right now, today, the Senate is on recess. What that means is they don't reconvene again until Monday. The, the, as of 12 o'clock PM tonight, as of 12 o'clock PM tonight, the, the CARES Act is over with. As of 12 o'clock tonight, on, which becomes August 1st, the, the CARES Act, as far as the unemployment benefits, that is over. So as of right now, right now, as we speak today, right now, at this very minute, there is no extension. There is no proposal. There are proposals. 
the X that they're proposing, but there is no extension, there is no vote, there is nothing Trump himself can do. There is no, but tell Congress, let's talk about this. Let's get some type of something going on, which he should have been doing for the last month. He didn't do nothing until his friends started saying, Look, you know, we're going to lose money. If you never received the first stimulus, you need to co contact the IRS and find out why. The Republicans don't want to support us more than... This, this is the problem that I have. The Republicans had no problem giving over $600 billion to these corporations that didn't need it. They were billion-dollar corporations already, but let's just give them some more money because a lot of public interest is tied to deregulation and industry. And so they were... And listen, y'all. Let me check. Let me tell you something. A lot of people are talking about that, okay, Democrats not for you, Republicans not for you neither. True enough. I agree into some parts about that. At the end of the day, all they care about is getting elected again, getting that free money and putting themselves and their family in a position to get better. So I agree to that to some extent, but let me tell you why I am a Democratic supporting person. And I'm going to explain that to y'all why. Because I know the history of why black people shouldn't be Republicans anymore. I'm about to get that to y'all right now. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. And it has something to do with ideology. Now, um, so, a lot of people say, Trump and his cohorts like to say, well, the Republicans freed the slaves and the Republicans ended slavery. And to some extent, that is true. I will tell you this. Abraham Lincoln, who signed the Emancipation Proclamation that freed the slaves, was a Republican. His uh, successor, who was instrumental with the institution, the you hear about Juneteenth and stuff, and forcing the army to go free the slaves, was a Republican. This is very much so true. You cannot get away from that. It is what it is. Um, however, when it comes to the issues of slavery and policy, a lot of people in the in, in, in especially in the South were so dependent upon slavery for a way of life. Like so, you know, like okay, so if I was a plantation owner and then all of a sudden my entire workforce who I don't pay anything becomes a workforce that I have to pay. I have to institute an ideology that allows me to keep moving, which is why you had the sharecropping and you had the you had the people still living on places, and why still down south we have a, a ideology about oh the white people could do this and the white people could do that and all that stuff like that. So yes, the Republicans initially freed the slaves, but they also were more pacifist at the time. The Republicans wanted to make everything just better. Okay, look, we all right, we. You know, we're going to free them because it's just the right thing to do. But we still want to institute ideologies where y'all can still get over on them. That's what it is. And so they were trying to appease the white people of the South to bring everything. It's called Reconstruction. And go look it up. And so even though the Republicans did was instituted, the, 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 the ide look, let's free the Look, let's Emancipation Proclamation. Let them go. Make sure the army out there. Make sure they know they're free. Yada, yada, yada. They also wanted to appease their white brethren. In, in the South and say, listen, okay, look, this is what we're going to still do. We're going to let y'all, we're going to free them, but look, we're going to let y'all still keep them mentally enslaved. So then, this became apparent when you get into a um, hundred years later in the Civil Rights Movement. And they had this dude named by the name of Barry Goldwater. Now, Barry Goldwater, now, uh, uh, before that, for the most part, most, most black people, when they became uh, free, they were automatically Republican. This is just what it was. <laughs> we, just, we just departed their freedom. This is what we became. And for the black people that were gaining the right to vote, the few and far between of those, we were just automatically Republican. But here come Barry Goldwater. And Barry Goldwater, basically, so as we became, we, we was already kind of Republican, and we started getting more knowledgeable about stuff. The knowledge of the, the free blacks of North was seeping down to the to the mentally enslaved blacks that, uh, that were, were down South. And we started to be knowledgeable. So we was like, okay, we're here and we're free, but it really ain't free if we don't have some sort of tangible equality. We don't have no equality. We free, but we ain't got no equality. Like what the what the what's the what's the purpose of what's the what's what is the part of being free if we're not really free? And so, um, by this time, people like Barry Goldwater wanted to the segregation. 
so after Reconstruction, we, we got into the part, if you follow me, we got into the part of like wanting more. Like, what the hell is this? We still slip like slaves. It's just y'all ain't calling it this no more. And so people like Barry Goldwater, who were big staunch Republicans, was like, y'all not finna change how it is. Y'all not finna change And why Republicans have the, the What I call conservatives Like conservative Keep it how it is It's working And everybody happy Let's keep it how it is Let's conserve what it is And so this This ultra right conservative ship Is what Caused Republicans to develop And, and hone The ideology of keeping stuff like it is And not being any type of progressive Or, or liberal As they say liberating which was the stark divide for the black community and why we left in throes from the Republican Party and had to join the liberating Democratic Party. It wasn't so much that we, it wasn't so much as us leaving, but it was just a smart thing to do. Even though, yes, the Republican Party emancipated us, but when we were enlightened to see what they was really doing, we had to leave. And so as a black person, it's hard for me to understand why any black person could still be Republican. Yes, you freed him, but that was basically to pacify. You freed us, true. But you also de develop, through reconstruction, you develop ideologies which then enslaved our minds, which is almost as worse. So it's hard for me to understand why any black person could support a Republican, period. Not saying the Democrats much better, but I will say this. That at least for certain they don't they don't possess an ideology of conservatism, which is basically something that's instituted to deny you of simple basic rights. Democrats are for, <laughs> Democrats are they started a lot of stuff, but their ideology changed. Now things I don't agree with Democrats on true. I don't believe in some of the crutches that they give us. I believe that because Democrats, if their mindset is just like you know. All right, well, give them some benefits, give them some of this, give them some food stamps, give them some welfare, and everybody going to be happy. No, we don't want that. Fix all our credit. How about that, Democrat? You know what? Make us financially competitive with you. Uh, let, educate us about the, 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 the ends and outs of finances. How about that? That's what we really want from you, too. But at the same time, you know, I, I'm just, I can't go with somebody whose ideology is to mentally enslave you. Like, the Republicans don't even want you to know about stuff. Keep it a secret. Hush, hush. Oh, we don't need to know about that. Don't get it twisted. I'm a, dem I'm, I'm a Democrat and I will be voting Democrat. But I will also, and I will be voting Democrat, but it's only because Democrats are the, l are the lesser of the two evils here. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Democrats have a lot more to do. Not only to, 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 so for our true liberation, it does take, not only that, it takes financial independence, economic independence, and it takes uh, also a educating about those things that they don't ever do at all. They just want to give us the crutch and keep it going. True enough, you just the lesser two evils at the time. I will never vote for Republicans because I just think that their ideology and way of thinking is, is, is too obtuse. And, and not only for my, not only for my, identity as a black man but also my sexual identity as a gay man so it's like y'all just <laughs> y'all just don't like me at all so with that being said i have to align more with the democrats if there was a better option i would choose it but it's the lesser of two evil so with that being said so as we are only talking about oh trump want to help us no trump don't want to help us he want to help his partners <laughs> he's making it look like it don't be fooled by that as far as the Republicans are concerned, don't vote for the people. Please don't. Black people don't vote for the people. I'm sorry. If you don't want to vote, but you go vote. If, if you got to vote Republican, go vote with it. But just go vote. But don't vote for the people, child. They're <laughs> just they dumb. And as far as knowing what's happening right now, as far as the, the things that, that we are relying upon, because they're giving us the option. If they take the money away, they're telling us, go out there and work. Don't worry about Corona. Go work. Because they're giving you a choice to go out there, work, and potentially die and catch corona, or stay home and starve and die being scared of corona. That's the options they're giving you. And so when you so you have the right to call your senator, call your congressman, call your representative. You have the right to call these people and tell them, listen, y'all tripping. And that's what they're doing now. So, so just don't be fooled by it. At this time, I'll take callers and questions. Anybody want to say something? Anybody want to add? Subtract about what I said No No tea, no shade, no none of that We're just going to be talking about This political stuff The civic type stuff, that's all we're going to do Anybody want to add or subtract Am I misinformed? Please Would you like to talk? come and tell me something About how Mr. Ma'am Whoever you are 
comes to the light and let me know. I would I would I would have this discussion. We shouldn't settle for that, but what you gonna do? What you gonna do? Vote not vote. Too many people. So let me say something. Too many people died for you to be able to go vote. Go vote for somebody, sister. I mean, what you gonna do? Hi, Shaky. How are you? I'm all right. How you doing, sister? I love you, by the way. I love you too. <laughs> um, yeah. So, what do you think about um, reparations and how they're handling reparations in some states? Um, I think it's too little, too late. But I do think. Um, you know what? I would be fine if the reparation money. See, this is what I'm scared of, and this is being real. Um, I'm thinking the, the if they give us reparation money tomorrow, yeah. they're gonna be richer the next day because okay. we're gonna spend our money, our reparation money, with them because they own everything. Mm. Okay. So if they're giving us reparations, it's only to make themselves more richer. Because they own the phones we use, they own everything, they own pretty much everything. We're going to use reparations not to make ourselves better because we don't have choices when it comes to a lot of stuff. Everything they got their hands in. And so, to me, true reparations would come from them making us economically independent or educated. And if I think the reparation should be, if anything, if I don't want them to give us. And this sounds crazy, but I don't want them to just cut us a check. Yeah, I would like money, but I don't want them to just cut us a check saying, okay, this is reparations because it doesn't do nothing to make us spend more money with them. I think that reparations should be, um, you know what, if you're black, you go to, because of slavery, all your college is free. If you're black mm. because of slavery, all your credit is fixed. If you're black and you're because of slavery, all you get the, you get the, you got, you get free education when it comes to things of uh, economic standpoint. Or uh, if you're black and because of slavery, our reparations, we're going to give you stock and bonds mm. and stuff like that. Things right, I agree. Assets. Um, if you're black and because of slavery, our reparations should be those things. I don't think that a black should just, oh, well, here y'all check, y'all reparated, go sit down. I think that's a bad thing because all it does is the money going to cycle right back to them. I agree with that. I agree. <laughs> Because right. like, like you said, and even with like the stimulus checks, it's basically like, what do we do with our stimulus checks? Do we really pay our rent or do we go and spend, spend, spend? And it goes I, right back into their pockets. I went spend, spend, spend and went right back to them. <laughs> I'm guilty. <laughs> I'm guilty. I'm guilty. I'm going to be real with y'all. I'm guilty. I spent, spend, spend and went right back to them. <laughs> well, at least you're honest. <laughs> what if we go buy some miracle drops? Here? What the fuck? I'm not going to buy that. <laughs> So, and no, <laughs> oh God! <laughs> well, thank you so much. Right, thank you so much. I appreciate you. I already have Bye. a good day. You too. <laughs> Be real. I spit the girl. I spit the girl. I spit the girl. I spit the girl. That's the girl. Them twelve hundred dollars will go. <laughs> How you doing? What's going on? I'm good. I'm cool. Do you have something? Um, to say? Yeah, like I just got on your live, so I feel like I kind of missed a lot of what was going on about what you were talking about. Um, um, but you're hilarious, and I've seen your post about um, oh my god, I can't think of her name all of a sudden because I feel like I'm on the spot. Um, I don't want to call her a drag queen. Although she might be that. T.S. Madison? There we go. There we go. Yo, that had me rolling on the floor. I mean, I know it wasn't you personally that, like, put up the discussion. But, like, I follow your page, so that's how I got the news. But <sighs> you're hilarious. You're hilarious. That's all I can really comment on. But um, personally, I am trying to make waves in my community as a gay rap artist. Um just trying to do something different you know i feel like a lot of us are so segregated and it's hard for us to band together to really show our heterosexual counterparts that we can be just like them if not better okay so let me let me let me let me let me let me um address something so right now we were talking about some politics and stuff and what was going on as far as uh the pandemic and everybody getting their money and stuff like that but i will say this and address that because that can sometimes be a political issue I'm gonna say this, you know, I'm I am a gay man, an openly gay man, but I think, mm -hmm. that, and I, but my opinion, and I don't, I know some of the, my gay people 
my you know, I like I love my, my gay community, but I think that's secondary to what's going on right now. And the reason why Absolutely, I say I that, the, the reason I say that is because when I was arrested, I was arrested, they saw black. When I was convicted, they saw black. When I was sentenced, they saw black. They didn't arrest me. They didn't they saw a black man. They didn't care. They didn't see a gay man. They saw a black man. And so right now, we are pre we are judged first by the color of our skin. And I think that's the most Person. important thing. And I think that let me see if I'm agree with you. But no, I, go think, ahead. I also think that because of that, my alignment right now comes with the Black Lives Movement than it does the gay movement. I love my gay people, and I, I know that sounds people. A lot of them are saying that a lot. I have gotten hate <laughs> messages saying I don't support the gay people. But right now, right now, I, I know for a fact that I was sentenced and put in a cage for nine years, like a, like any other black man. Not because if, if there was a, if there was a gay. Child. If there was a if there was a gay uh, lesson in the time, I sure didn't get it. And so, my alignment is right now is focused on the black people, the gay people. Right. They, they, go, they you know, it, it's gonna come later. <laughs> oh, that's not the time for this. Now, I'm not saying black, gay, and trans lives don't matter. They matter just as much as anybody. Absolutely. Matter. But they matter because they're, they're this. If a gay, if a if a trans woman was hurt, that's a black life that matters. And that's what it is. That's a life. See, for me, it's like I, I grew up in New York City my entire life. So it kind of different is different from being born in the South, mainly because what you see on the media or you see like just in, like in politics, period, as far as like, you know, gay issues. It's a perception that, you know, it's a safe zone. Like, like the North is safe if you're gay or New York is safe. And that's not really the, the that's not the actual issue unless you actually live here. That's something you won't know unless you live here. Now, of course, I see both sides. I mean, as a black gay man, it's, I feel like it's a double edged sword. You know, it's like, you know, racism comes at me because of the skin, because of the color of my skin. But then there's people who look at me and who look just like me also hate me because of who I choose to have sex with. Like, and then, it, you know, it, it's like a double edged sword. It's like, do I stand with the people who threw stones at me when I was asking for gay rights equality? Or do I stand with the people who want to arrest me and exterminate me off the planet? It, it's really, it's really difficult because, you know, yeah, I support, you know, any black movements, anything that's equality for everyone. You know, I don't feel like anyone needs to be demeaned because of who they are or things that they can't choose. You know, we were all born this way. I, I didn't wake up one day and said, you know, I want to be dark skinned. You know, same way I didn't wake up one day and said, you know, hmm, men, I didn't, that's not what happened. Um, but it's like, it's perceived that way from white people is perceived as if like, oh, you chose this. And for black people, especially black men in the black community, it's like, oh, well, just go be with a woman. And it's like, that's not easy. The same way you say that I can say, go be with a man and it won't work for you. But it's just like, it puts you in a hard place because we've seen this time and time again, you know, Black Lives Matter movement, when it finally ends, I go back to being a faggot. I don't, I, I'm your brother right now because I look just like you and you want a, a great following. You want a bigger number. But as soon as this is over and as soon as this laid to rest, I go back to being a faggot. Did you see the video of them attacking the trans woman in the gas station? Yes. That was that like uh, lawfully and where I come from, that's attempted murder. Whenever you are attacked by three or more people, that's attempted murder. The fact that she had to hide in the gas station and be protected by the people who worked there was disgusting. The fact that, you know, all she did was live her life and this is what happened. Disgusting. And I don't like the idea of, you know, in one voice, it's, it's, oh, she, she, right? And then in another voice, it's, oh, we know you're a man. So what is it? Did you know I was a man the whole entire time or was you tricked? You know, it, it seems like people pick a narrative that's just, what's the word I'm looking for? People pick the narrative that just aligns with what they want right then and there. You know, you see posts all the time, like, oh, you're tricking me. Are they really? Because th there's so many things that you can tell the difference was. First of all, anytime I see a female that is hypersexual in the way that they dress, that's the biggest red flag to me that you're, that you're trans. Because most natural born females have been taught to be more conservative. They grew up with they grew up with breasts their whole life. They have no reason to just flaunt them the way the way men do. It's new for you. Men are not. Um, 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 
I don't care what y'all was saying in the comments. He does have good points. It was some good points. I know y'all couldn't hear it was the echo and stuff like that, but he did have some good points. Um, so back to oh y'all can hear me? Can y'all hear me? <laughs> no, y'all hear me? Hear me? Okay. I want to come on, shake. I said five minutes. Come on, this sister. <laughs> Good morning. Hi. How you doing this morning? Good morning. So we actually talking about politics, correct? Correct. Okay. So <laughs> this is what I studied. So I saw that she was talking about in the comments. Please, y'all, the Republicans don't care about us. There has been two bills proposed for coronavirus relief. They have not chose to vote on it. So the leader, Mitch McConnell, like, they had months to vote on this and they haven't. They don't want to pass anything. They don't want to pay us. They don't want the alleged to, election to go on. What they want to happen is they want to cause chaos. They don't want us to get our money. They don't want us to go back to work, even though they're saying that they want us to be, they want us to be mad. They want us to be upset so we can go out and riot and they can delay the election. Right. Trump already said that. Why do you think, well, I know Trump wants to delay the ex election, but do you think that, um, so do you think... Uh, the, the Republicans want to delay the election because, the, especially the ones in Congress, because they fear losing some of their seats or something. You think they can lose? Do you think there's a path for the Republicans to lose power in the Senate? Oh yeah, but <laughs> the Republicans do this every election year. If people don't realize, stuff always pop off on the election year because they want to distract us. So they don't want us to know that they're pulling all this. So everyone knows that USPS is a mess, right? They're messing up USPS. So then when the election comes, the mail-in ballots won't get there in time and they don't have to count them. Okay? So they're literally sabotaging our mail system so they don't have to count those votes because they know a lot of people are going to mail in this year. So, so, so <laughs> a lot of people are saying that, I, and I agree with you 100%. So they, they're saying that the, I, we, I think everybody agrees that the re Republicans are some bullshit. We can oh, yeah. that a thousand Always. Percent. But we oh. also kind of looking at the, the Democrats like, like what y'all, like y'all, y'all, what the, what the, what y'all really doing on, on, this, on the other side? Oh, but they, they're country. both messed up. No. <laughs> they both suck. Okay. Neither so, of them are on our team. So watch this. Let me say this. Oh, so we just had a Democrat president. Um, for six years of his term, he had mm -hmm. a Republican Congress that fought him on everything, so he couldn't, he couldn't do much. But for two years of his term, he did have a Democratic side of Congress. And so, why would so that this was times to push through what you could push through? Obamacare got pushed through during this time, and a lot of things that that he wanted to get done was done in this time. Why weren't why aren't things changed from the time that he did have a democratically controlled Congress? A Democrat. What a lot of people don't realize, and that's what we can talk about too with the Democratic Party, they play a lot of good games, as in they act like they're for us and they want the best, but. They, it, there's a lot of stalling going on on their part, too, because if people didn't think about Joe Biden, remember everybody wanted Bernie, and we know that he had the good policies, but the Democratic Party is going to elect somebody like Joe Biden because they don't necessarily want things to change. They just want us to vote for them. Right. <laughs> like, that's right. honestly how it goes. So with Obama, when we had the 
Democratic Congress and stuff, and it was the majority, he was scared to push the trigger a lot and make a bunch of executive orders like Trump does. So as y'all see, Trump does a new executive order every day. He don't care. That's what Obama needed to have. The problem with Obama is he was scared to put his finger on the trigger because he was like, he's black. He was afraid people are going to judge him. But I'm just like, at what expense? What do we get out of Obama's pregnancy, uh, pre presidency? What did black yes. people get? Obamacare is pretty much it. Pretty answer. much it. So it's like, and I love Obama just like the rest of us, but it's like, we have to be able to critique these people as well because this is, this is life and death for us. So we really I have to so. think about these politicians and what they really stand for. Barack and Michelle just came out with a podcast talking about how black people don't vote and they need us to vote. It's the same song and dance every year. We do vote. We do. We do. But so when we don't, I think that's the problem. I think that they look at, they, the Democrats take our vote for granted and the Republicans count on us not vote. And so this, yeah. is, the, this is the part that we're, we're, we're stuck in a lot when it comes to our vote. Now we can't vote. We can't vote independent. And let me tell you why we. Yes, we cannot. We can't vote Please do not. <laughs> because it's it's like the best thing about our vote is we cancel a lot with the white folks vote, and that's the best thing that we could do with our vote. Is our vote is so strong that it cancels out one of theirs, and that's why right. they don't want you to vote. That's why they want you to not mail it, and that's why they count on you not to. That's why we have a lot of these policies where. If you're convicted of felon, it's very difficult. To, and uh, uh, they don't even make acknowledgement that you can get your voting rights back. And it's, it's basically a couple of forms you fill out. And it's, it's, they don't make this knowledge. They don't mm -hmm. talk about this. And they don't want you to know this. They don't want you. And they want you to not vote as much as possible because they understand the power of our vote. And Democrats just figure, oh, we're going to vote for them just because. And that's going to be it. And so Correct. we do need a better option. We don't have a better option today. So for this election, I don't care what y'all niggas out there doing. Y'all better go ahead and vote, and y'all better pull it for Biden. I don't care if y'all find Biden tomorrow in a motel room, snorting coke. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but honestly, some... what people are saying in the comments, and I see what y'all are saying. They're saying that people, black people don't vote. We have to realize, too, that that's a narrative that is found out to encourage us not to. So I'm not saying that there's some of us out there who do not fulfill our civic duty. Some of us don't. And for those people, if we know those people, you encourage them. The government isn't going to encourage people to vote. People a lot of times sit back and wait for a great shaver, tell them something. You know you need to vote. If you know someone who isn't voting, get on them about it. You do your part. So don't sit here and be like, oh, we don't vote. A lot of us don't vote. You know people who don't vote. Are you talking to them about it? Okay. Go, oh, all right. go vote. <laughs> y'all better go vote. Listen, if y'all, listen, if, if Biden come out tomorrow and he start using miracle drops, Y'all still go vote for me. I don't care what happens. Y'all go vote I mean, for me. Please do that for me. And y'all do and that. We can, and we can work on Biden when we get him in. That's the thing. So the thing about Biden is he knows that a lot is riding on his vote. So he's willing to change his platform. Still hate the man. Still don't like him. But right. he's better than Trump because Trump is trying to cause direct harm. Trump, the reason that Trump is such a problem and people try and act like he isn't is Trump is very self-interested. So he's different than the Democrats in the fact that he tries to act like he's this good person. He just wants to make money. Right. He doesn't care about what any of us think. So it's like, we have to get Trump out of here because he will do anything to stay in power and to make money. Right. And for Biden, the thing is, he isn't the best person either, but he's we not. can hold Biden accountable and the Democrats accountable. We cannot hold at Trump least, accountable. At least we can hold him accountable. At least exactly. the Republicans are going to give a fuck anyway because they don't, they count us not to go to vote anyway. The Democrats at least you know, something. And so, exactly. so okay, so notwithstanding this election, I, and I like how you talk, may I actually, wait, how old are you, baby? Because you was a, you was a youngster. I'm 22. I just graduated you from college. And Congratulations. I, uh, thank you. Congratulations. With a degree okay. in political science. So again, uh, this is all I talk about. I have my own page too, the executive team. We do politics and stuff. So DM me. I want to follow you. I want yes, to follow please you. Please do. Yes. Right after this, I want to follow you. And yes, you're, of you're, course. you're a smart sister. We need more of a smart sister. Like, right, right. So, yes. Okay. And where you from, my baby? I'm from Nola. Okay. From Nola. Right okay. Yeah. So, all right. So, you know, you, girl, you talk a little. You know, you talk like one of them up dark girls. <laughs> <laughs> so, I listen. get that a lot. I don't have an accent, y'all. Yeah. I know. I get. I, I, I get and, that a lot. You, you have a great mind. You're very knowledgeable. So, I, I'm gonna ask you this: You the future. I, I'm not withstanding this election. Well, what's the solution for us as black people in a political arena to obtain some level of yeah, what's the, what's the solution? What, how do we fix it? We know the problem. And we know so, right, right, okay. So I feel the solution for us as Black people is to, I think that we have to realize that voting is very important, but it's not the end-all be-all, right? 
So I think that the government has got us wound up in thinking that, okay, you vote and that's all you have to do. A lot of the problem that we know is these politicians don't stand for our interests. So I think the next step for Black people for us to do is, and I know that it's harder because we are a divided community in the fact that we don't necessarily have anything that can unify us and the fact that we don't have a language. You know, we're in America, but there's a lot of things that have been placed against us not to unify. So just um, basically figuring out what our platform is and lobbying. So lobbying is how groups get things done. So like you see the Asians and the Jews, what they do is they lobby to the government and they tell them that we want this or we're taking away this. So that's the thing. So the only way that the government is going to listen is if you talk money to them. So we need our own lobbying groups. And that's why I get on like specific groups like Black Lives Matter. And I'm just like, mm, they're not doing what they need to be doing because they should be a lobbyist group. They should be going to the government and saying, as Black Lives Matter, this is what we need as Black people. And we're going to hold y'all accountable for that. Certain institutions like the NAACP and the Urban League, which I have worked for, they don't do much. <laughs> so these are supposed to be the groups who are supposed to be helping us in lobbying to the government, and they don't do it. So, yeah. Y'all can follow. go to my page and follow. Well, me, I want to type, type it in. I want to type it and pin it. If yeah, I'm oh, yeah, yeah. Look, I'm going to type it. I'm going to type it. Type it, and, I'm a, um, and I want to pin it. Because you yes. use you, 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 you 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 very much a small sister that... that and I could tell by what you were saying that you are not more, definitely more knowledgeable about what's going on than me. There she go right. There. Right. And it's not about, it's just about sharing the knowledge. It's not about being condescending. I realize a lot of people, especially in the college space, they're very condescending on how they talk to people and that they, and I'm like, that's not getting anything done. Let's, especially as black people, let's talk to each other, have grace for each other. Let's have understanding and let's talk about what we can do to move forward. Not all that other stuff. Do you have any political aspirations or something that, that as far as running for something or anything like that in the future? I, uh, I always talk to people about that, but I'm just like seeing how politics are. So originally I wanted to be a lawyer and I'm just like going through political science, seeing how the government is. I'm like, mm, I don't want to, it's so dirty. You go in there with certain you know, beliefs, and then the government, the way it works, it, that's how it is for Black politicians, right? We look at them, we're like, why they ain't doing nothing? They ain't doing nothing for us. Truth is, their hands are tied. They can't do, anytime they try to do, I actually um, was just doing, um, like, a temporary internship with a consulting firm, and we were talking to um, a lot of different people who work in the federal government, Black people, right? Yeah. So this man, who's a director for a federal agency, was saying that they talk shit about him for hiring a Black guy. <laughs> I'm like, white people can go in and hire whoever they want, but you're a black person working at a federal agency, and they're going to talk shit about you for hiring a black person. Right. This is what we're up against. We're up against that. We let it happen, right. though, I think, in my mind. I think that's what a lot of times we just allow stuff to happen, and we want to fight the battle on our terms when I think, we, unfortunately, we got to know these political things, these economical things, which is their languages. This is how they talk. They talk money. They talk politics. They talk these things. And these are languages where we don't have an idea how to talk. And this is where I think a lot of the disconnect comes in. But thankfully, we have sisters like you that's coming up. And I, I, I pray that we get more sisters like you. You remind me of my, my daughter, but she's not really a political person, but she's just a nerd. But you remind me a lot of her. And I'm glad that y'all are coming up and that y'all, I, I believe in y'all. And the youth is our, y'all are going to take over this world. And I think y'all going to make it better for not only us as we get older, but the, the what's coming behind y'all. I'm, I'm proud of y'all. Thank you so much for coming. You are always welcome here. Yes, I'll be definitely following yes. you. I employ everybody in here to press their follow button for these young black sisters so they can have a voice in there and we can be heard. And I was yes. to just a mess all the time. I do appreciate you coming through. I'm sorry. And I we, but we, here's the thing. We love the mess, but we could do both. That's why I'm like, I, I follow you and I enjoy what you talk about. I have my page too. We talk about politics. It's, Everything we it's something for everybody. We can all stay informed and be in the mess and be in everything. Right. And I love it. And I love it. Thank you so much. All right. Thank it you, is, Shay. Is Alexis. Alexis is your name? Yes, Alexis. That's my name. And nice, they exactly nice. the page. So yeah, y'all yes. follow. It's supposed to stay pinned for the duration of this uh this this little broadcast. Yes, yes, you. thank you. Stop. Yes, Stop. thank you for having me. No problem, my baby. All right, bye y'all. Y'all follow Miss Alexis. Smart black sister, young sister. Y'all follow her, the executive team. It sounds like exactly what I'm, I need in my life sometimes, a little political tea, <laughs> and I like that. And I, I want y'all, we, we are going to follow her. I'm going to post her, you heard me, and we want to follow her. That's what we're going to do, okay? We're going to get, you know, that's the kind of stuff we need to hear, and that's the kind of discussions we need to have, not just amongst ourselves, but with our families, too. Let me tell you something, black people. It, this is what it is. Y'all instill in these kids that they have to vote. 
your grandparents, your mothers, and all of us, I will, the people that came before us, they was getting hit. We just saw John Lewis pass away. R.I.P. John Lewis. Uh, this man got beat, his skull crushed, so that you could vote. And you gonna sit on your butt and not do it? So go vote for somebody. Bye. It don't matter. Just vote for This time, he'll just get Trump out of office. Please. Please do that for me. If I'm hurt, get this fool out of office. There's no, there's nothing, this man has allowed us to succumb to this pandemic. He does not care about black people. It's obvious. He don't, the money he's trying to give to the people is really for his people. Trust me, don't even, we broke that down in this podcast itself. So even if y'all got the vote for Democrats this time and we figure out the rest later, don't just go vote, make it count. And it's still that into our family. Please do that. Please do that. Please do that. I'm begging y'all, just go do it. Your, your people got your, your your people that came before you got crushed, homes, spray, the same things that we're feeling now for the Black Lives Matter movement, all because to get you to be able to go vote. Black people, Obama just talked about how back in the day, to stop black people voting, they used to say, oh, how many beans in the jelly jar? They got to do with my rights. I can still pull a leaf off the mouth. And so this is the kind of stuff they used to do in the games they used to play to prevent us from having a voice. And the people that passed away for you to have that voice and for you to say, I'm not going to use it because they don't count on and stuff like that, is just truly atrocious. If it doesn't account, guess what? Your people wouldn't have died for it when they got beat, when they got dogs biting them and hosed down and, and, and sprayed with tear gas in the street. It has to matter. And so you have a, 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 a responsibility to vote. And not just on the presidential thing, but everything else. As we can see, we proved that part two through the history lesson we have today that Congress actually has the power. So it's who you put in office there. And I'm going to give y'all a little hint. Right now, yes, I'm very left. I'm very liberal. I'm a Democrat, and I'm going to say that. I'm going to vote Democrat. Uh, and, and, and that's not necessarily the best option. I'm not going to take that from us. Y'all are right when y'all say the Democrats is the Democrats. They do take us for granted. I agree with y'all. However, one thing I know for certain is that the Republican ideology is 100% not for you. The Democrats are a little, they're not, a, they're not 100% for us. But I'm going to take the little 50% and turn as a better option. And and I think the better option comes from systems like this Alexis at the executive team that come through and have the right mindset about education and populating and bringing our people up into a, a better life. I love her. I love people like that. And so until she's ready to run for representative and run for Congress and run for stuff, we have to just take what we have. And that's not Trump in his pocket. I'm just being real with y'all. If you don't vote for Biden, who you don't vote for? I wouldn't care. Listen, if Biden could come out tomorrow, he could take a crayon, he could take the Crayola padded, bitch, and he could he could take the Crayola padded and put that bitch right here and walk around. I, I'm voting for Biden. I would give it that. It's okay. Now, the, now see, the, you're talking about the electoral votes are what matters. True enough. The electoral votes matter, but your vote puts who goes to the electoral college. Because when you go vote, you're really voting for the electoral college. But go vote and put the people, put the electoral college that's going to vote for Biden. That's what you do. I wouldn't care if you got the ballot on. You can have the Chalk Foundation on tomorrow. I'm voting for Biden. I'm letting y'all know, and I implore y'all to do so until we can figure out. So our votes do count for the presidential election because you vote the electoral college in. It, it counts. I want Alexis to be president too, but sister, you know, she's not ready. You got to be 35 to be president. She's 22. When she's 25, she could be representative, and we're going to vote for her then. So listen, there's a minute left on this live. I appreciate y'all for coming by and see. If y'all missed it, I'm going to throw it on YouTube just for that purpose because this is something that we need to talk about. I'm going to try to do some more of these because these are important for what we need to talk about. There's a lot of misinformation, and I saw that in the comments. I appreciate y'all for stopping by and, t and, 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 and joining me with this. It's about to be over. I thank for the people that did join the live and for having this political discussion with me this morning um, because it's important. I wish call your congressman and tell him, look, we're not satisfied with the job they're doing in regards to the unemployment because some of us are depending on that. Um, I love y'all and I do thank for y'all for stopping by. I'm not coming back right now because I mean, it's not, we say everything we had to say. Thank you so much, Alexis. Make sure y'all follow her to the executive team and I will talk to y'all later.